powerful images seen on television screens, websites, and the front pages of newspapers around the world. Like this one, as a man in Georgia holds the body of his relative in 2008. The picture was captured during the conflict with Russia. Little thought tends to be given to the people who take these pictures, such as the photographer who is behind the lens amid a firefight alongside a U.S. Marine in Afghanistan. Or consider this one. It's a woman crying when she cannot find her four-year-old daughter or her husband. It was also taken in 2008, five days after the historic Sichuan earthquake in southwestern China. And you may remember another picture in 2005. A malnourished one-year-old boy presses his hand against the lips of his mother. Again, it's impossible not to feel the heartbreak, but what impact does witnessing all of this have on a journalist? Our discussion about mental trauma and journalists in just a moment, but first consider what's happening in Mexico. Kidnappings, murders, burned bodies, decapitations. There are acts of hideous violence that many journalists there witness daily. All of this raises concerns about the mental health of journalists. CCTV's Frank Contreras has insight from Mexico City. A veces pienso que es algo que yo ya había superado. Sometimes I think I've gotten over it. Pero todavía lo recuerdo. But then I remember that very difficult moment. Mexico City-based journalist Baldina Flores Martinez reports on acts of violence against journalists in her country. In March 2014, she began receiving threatening phone calls. Then came noticeable changes in her emotional health. The first was a sensation of confusion, of fear, then loneliness, and then came a time of deep sadness. Balbina is not alone. The international organization Reporters Without Borders says Mexico is one of the most deadly countries in the world for working journalists. Balbina says from the year 2000 to 2014, at least 100 reporters were killed in Mexico. Psychologists at Mexico's National Autonomous University recently interviewed more than 100 Mexican journalists who cover violence in this country. Their research raises serious questions about the journalist's mental health status. They can have nightmares, flashbacks, and are unable to remove the traumatic moments they've witnessed from their minds. They can become irritable, suffer from anxiety, they don't go out, they have problems relating to others. According to the study, 77 percent of journalists in Mexico suffer from high rates of anxiety, and more than 40 percent report symptoms of post-traumatic stress. The study also shows that a quarter of journalists turn to alcohol and other drugs to relieve their emotional pain. Journalists also face aggressions, not just from criminal groups, but also from governments, the army, the marines, police at the local and federal levels, and public functionaries. Every day, journalists covering crime in Mexico witness the results of violence, kidnappings, scores of murders, and mutilated bodies. Balbina and some of her colleagues have created a special website which explains the symptoms of post-traumatic stress and anxiety and offers coping methods, including spending time with children and pets. Balbina says the violence directed at journalists continues in Mexico largely because it's often met with impunity from the law. There is so much mistrust against authorities, especially at the municipal level where organized crime can infiltrate. Balbina says few journalists here bother to take the time to understand their own mental health status. And she says even fewer bosses offer to help protect journalists from the dangers of practicing this profession. Frank Contreras, CCTV, Mexico City.